the two things I regret most in ministry. Now listen to Benny Hinn's second biggest regret. This should blow your mind. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Benny Hinn recently did an interview, or should I say damage control, after a major expose video that Mike Winger did. It's over four hours, as you can see here. You've probably seen it. If not, go watch it. Now, I've done videos on Benny Hinn. There's Christian YouTubers that have done videos on Benny Hinn, but Mike Winger has done a great job putting everything, essentially, into one video. Now, there's lots of things that you could pick apart in this interview, but there's a fascinating thing that Benny Hinn talked about in this interview that I want to go over in this video. He talks about his two biggest regrets over his entire ministry. And he's been in ministry for like 50 years. I should say ministry, right? I get like, I, now I do have to be careful about how much I play of this interview and just how much I play of Benny Hinn in general because he does like to go after those who bring out his deception and he tries to take them down. As you saw with Mike Winger, he tried to take Mike Winger down. Real quick, would you consider hitting that thumbs up button? You know, when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. But I want you to listen very closely to how he describes his two biggest regrets. Do you reflect back on those years? Are there any regrets that you have? Absolutely. I'm a human being. I've made mistakes. I remember Oral telling me he made mistakes by the, by the truckloads. Uh, we all make mistakes. The two things I regret most in ministry Okay, real quick, if you followed Benny Hinn's destruction over the last several decades, then you would know that you should probably have more than two regrets. I was not too wise a number of times with prophecy. Um, number one, number one, I had guests come to uh, the Crusades that uh, I think brought harm to not only people's lives, but also to my rep reputation, because their, their prophecies were not really prophecy. They went outside the borders of, the borders of redemption. Because anything that's outside redemption uh, is not prophecy. Uh, we know, of course, that prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort, but it must be within redemption. And when, uh, when, when people come who uh, go beyond that, we should, not, we should not allow that. And I said that I allowed it, and then I stopped. But that was years ago when I stopped. Now, I want you to keep in mind how he's starting this regret by pointing the finger at other people. I'm going to explain why he's doing this in just a second. And I would like to hear from you in the comments if you spot any deception here. And then there were, there were times when I thought God had showed me something that he wasn't showing me, and I spoke it out. But in 1 Corinthians 13, we see very clearly that we all prophesy in part. That means we don't see the full picture. And sadly, and I wish I could go back and fix it, but sadly, uh, there were some prophecies I gave that were not accurate or from the Lord, but uh, who's perfect? And for that, of course, I ask people to forgive me. I'm just human uh, and made mistakes like that. And I'll probably make them again, I suppose, down, down the road because I'm not perfect. Now, did you catch what he did there? What you're doing is you're seeing Benny Hinn lead with others that have told false prophecies before he gets to himself. This is a very deceptive mind control tactic used to get you to hear how their false prophecies are bad and dangerous and, and they ruined my reputation. And then he goes on to explain away his own false prophecies as just being caught up in the imperfection of humanity. What he's doing here is he wants you to think that there are dangerous false prophecies and there are not dangerous false prophecies. I promise you, the Bible does not make that distinction. The Bible never, not once, gives an imperfection excuse 
to false prophets. The Bible is extremely clear that false prophets and false prophecies are evil and will not go unpunished. Real quick, before we get to Benny Hinn's second biggest regret, I want you to see what the Bible actually has to say about false prophets. There are countless verses we could go over, too many to go over in this video if I want to keep it succinct. But I want you to check out Deuteronomy chapter 18. Look at verse 20 here. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. You know, there are false prophets aplenty uh, and there have been forever. But the most cunning are those who claim to be Christians, those who claim to be speaking on behalf of the God of the Bible, but are really speaking on behalf of Satan. You know, one popular thing in this time was kings and, and prominent people would surround themselves with prophets who were false prophets, but they were prophets that would only prophesy good things over these people. They were essentially there to make them feel better about their depravity. And the Bible is telling us here that if what the prophet says does not come true, then they are not a prophet of God. They are not telling the truth. Don't even be afraid of them. Don't listen to them. Remember, verse 20 says that the punishment for these kind of people is that they shall die. Now, I want you to listen real quick to who Benny Hinn blames for all of this. You know, it's sad when people focus on the times you missed it, but that's just, you know, the way it is. Yeah, there were times when I did not miss it. Again, the Bible never makes a distinction between those who get it right sometimes and those who don't. You cannot claim to be speaking a prophecy from God, get it wrong multiple times, and continue on in ministry. That is not how this works. This isn't repentance. This is deflection. Now listen to Benny Hinn's second biggest regret. This should blow your mind. And then the other one is prosperity. And that's been a very difficult one for me. When I started in ministry, it was simple. And then the ministry grew. I was invited to go to what they call praise thons And I think that's when my troubles began. I don't blame anyone. But uh, sadly, you get kind of in a place that becomes difficult. You don't know what to do and how to get out of it. So I came to the conclusion in 2019 that I did not want to be a part of the gimmickry of it. Now, real quick, it's pretty shocking what he says here in just a second, but I wanted to point out that he says himself here that in 2019, he didn't want to be a part of the gimmicks. And I want you to understand that he was in ministry at that point for 45 years, and he was defined by the gimmicks and decided in 2019, finally, that he didn't want to be a part of that anymore. It was right after catching heavy heat again for being caught in utter deception, false miracles, false prophecies, false prosperity gospel teaching. So he decided to repent, if you remember this. And it was like weeks later, he was back to doing the exact same thing. Still stand by that. But sadly, I let pressure get to me. And because of that pressure, I said things and did things I should not have done. And for that, really, I am sorry. And I ask uh, the dear people watching us to really forgive me for that. And I'm striving with all my heart to, to be as biblical as possible with that. And frankly, you know, I'm kind of at the end of my road anyways. I don't see myself uh, needing to do a whole lot of that down the road. Benny Hinn just said that he's at the end of his road, so he doesn't see himself needing to do a whole lot of that anymore. What does that even mean? What it sounds like Benny Hinn is saying here is that he's not leaving ministry, but he's already made a name for himself. He's already made his wealth and doesn't need to continue to risk whatever reputation he has left peddling a false prosperity gospel. Does this mean he'll actually stop? My guess is no. I pray that Benny Hinn is truly repentant and that he does truly repent, but I can see one of two things happening here. One is he will stop for a little bit 
And as soon as some time passes, the heat is off of him. He'll reintroduce this false prosperity gospel as he's already done over the last couple years. Or he'll just find more cunning tactics that sound a little bit different but end in the same way. With him continuing to get rich off of emotionally deceiving people. Personally, I pray that Benny Hinn does repent. He does give his life to the Lord and stop peddling this false health and wealth gospel that is nowhere in scripture and that he would stop deflecting, stop blaming everybody else and he would take responsibility, step down from his ministry and live a life dedicated to Jesus Christ outside of the spotlight. Of course, it would be great for him to make amends and send all the money back to everybody that's ever given him money. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, check out verse 15 here, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. But listen to the punishment. Listen to what happens. Listen to how Jesus describes these people who never truly knew him. False prophets. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know, when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.